Ben Horner for Norwich Boxing, who with Billy Boy Bird. Um, last time it was all about sort of the rebuild from the unfortunate loss at York Hall. Back to winning ways. Now that can all be forgot about. Um, how, is, how have you gone into camp now, looking to finish a year on a high? Yeah, just, uh, well, stayed in camp, obviously, from my previous fight, which we got the win. It was the, it was the comeback fight after a silly defeat, which we spoke about now. It's, we've moved on from it. We, we had to change things. We've done that. Went out last time, got the win. Um, still got a lot more to prove. Um, like I said, just, I've stayed in camp for this, for this next one on November the 20th. Feeling good, feeling strong. Um, weight's pretty much coming down, looking bang on. Um, everything we've been working on on the previous camps we've brought involved into this one again. Yeah, it's all, it's all looking great so far. We, we sort of spoke about it a little bit just before the camera started rolling. The division's a funny division. Um, like when we sort of talked about your rank and where you are and you look at other people in the division, it's, it seems as if it's a bit false. Definitely. But. It's a funny division, the one I'm in. Um, if, if you look at the age rating of everyone, like we spoke about, everyone's there's no young pups coming through and I think I'll, I'll be the youngest one in pretty much nearly in, the, in that division. And I'm hungry now and I want, I'm going to start calling out some big names and that's what, that's what I want. We're just, listen, this... Boxing's a business, we all want we want nice shiny belts, so it's, it's what I'm going to be doing. I'll be calling out people who I want to fight. And if it's up to them whether they want to take them or not. Um, but all I'm saying is I, I want a nice, nice shiny new belt uh, around my waist. And the only way you can do that in this game, you've got, you've got to call people out. And people, it depends if they're going to, if they're going to want to defend it against me. And, you know, I'm, I've got a decent record of, 12 fights, 11 wins, you know, that and one defeat. And, you know, let's just see, they've got the upper hand, they've got more experience, let's see if they want to take it against me, so. Talking about the division, obviously you're lucky enough you've got someone in the same stable as you, Joe Hearn, um, who boxes in that division, so it's perfect sort of sparring for yourself. You, you can both see where you're at, like. Definitely, 100%. Joe, he's, I've, I've known Joe now for a few years, I've, I've trained with him, but I've, Obviously, used to train my old trainer Russell Smith. Joe is a is a heavy hang, a heavy-handed heavy banger, you know. And I would like nothing to see more than him do well on his on his uh, on the next show. Uh, he's got the headline of it. Uh, big title fight for him. It's a, it's a step forward for him, you know. He, he, Joe's got to move fast. He's he's, he's up there with the age. Um, but I believe if he, he knuckles down like he has been doing, you know, he, he's up early, he's up half four every morning, that lad, and he, he trains like a, tr like a trooper, you know, and I've got a few rounds to him tomorrow, I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's handy to have people like Joe in, in, in our stable uh, just to train alongside him, and, he's, like I say, you can learn a lot from him, he can move, he can, he can bang, and it's what you want. Again, talking about the division, um... Someone who's not up there at the top end of the age, sort of, but still a few years ahead of yourself, Anthony Gogo, um, local lad. Uh, you've done a few rounds of him before. Um, he'll be looking to come back from injury at the end of the year. So, do you feel having him back around could help you next year? Like you say, looking at them big belts. Yeah. One hundred, yeah, one hundred percent, Anthony. From pretty much day one of me turning over pro, he's he's done countless of rounds with me, and he's helped me throughout. Pretty much all, all my big fights, especially when I won the British Masters, he was he was one of my sparring partners for that, and he got me to in the like the good shape that I got in, obviously through sparring. Um, it's a shame with Anthony because he, he is a quali he is a good boxer. You can't take that away from him, um, and he's just with the injuries and that it does it's a setback, and it's you know once you get an injury, it's, it's hard to come not come back, but you know he has that injury, it's a setback. Yeah. Then he's got. To, then he gets himself fit again, and he gets another one. You know, and I feel sorry for him because he is he is a top lad, and he's he's taught me so much. And you know, I'm still inspiring him now. If when he's back in the gym, and I, he still learn more from him. So it's nice to have. It's good to have the stable that we've got. Who the boys we've got in here, you know, we've got the likes of Joe, Anthony, and a lot of the other boys like Nathan and that. It's good to have them. So yes, yeah, it's, it's all handy for me. Um, coming into the gym with a newly crowned British champion in Ryan Walsh. Uh, you were there on the night. 
how did you feel when you see that bell and you see him around the gym? Does that does that push you on a bit more? One hundred percent. You know that was went up went up there and watched it on the Saturday. Sunday morning I was up early, went for me run, and I was all I was thinking about is I want that belt. You know I, I want a belt like that, and I want I want to be everyone recognising me with that belt and doing it for everyone else, for myself. And it's a lovely what a belt to have. You know British mm. British champion. It says it, you haven't got to say no more. Yeah. You know, you haven't got to sell. Once you're a British champion, you haven't got to sell yourself. You haven't got to do nothing. You know, you are the British champion. Yeah. What, what more? It says it all, you know. And I couldn't have wished it for any more, for a better person than Ryan. He is one, all of them, all three brothers, they do anything for you. And they are, they come as a three. Yeah. You know, they're just, the way they are is similar to how I am with my brother. Uh, you know, it's it's what I want. You know, they do the way they train is is you can't describe it. No, you know, because no. everyone's got different ways of how they do it. But them three, they're just yeah, they're machines. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Do, without if one's not working, none of them work. Yeah, so. and it, like you say, to have a stable like that, you're sort of part of it yourself. You're all working really hard behind that door. Um, so when it comes to fight night people get to see an entertainment show. Um, what do you feel you'll be taking into the fight this time? Um, something I mentioned to you before I started getting the camera out, you used to get the tongue out, give people, it, put on put on that entertainment side and real get stuck into a fight. And then you sort of veered away from that. You started to become more slick, um, yeah. bob, weave and Evade no. shots. That's what, what do we see next in the next fight? The next fight, listen. One thing uh, since I've turned pro with, and I've done it pre in my previous uh, in the unlicensed that I used to do. I've always been known to slip shots well, but since being up here, I've with something Graham and John have drilled into me to do more and more. And it's the object of the game: hit, not to get hit. You know, and you, you keep doing that, it's just going to frustrate the person in front of you. You know. There's been countless times I've frustrated Graham and John when on the pads and they're going to put a shot out and I've moved out of the way and caught them something else. You know, it, it's something that I've always had and I will always keep progressing throughout my career. Um, but on the, on the 20th, I think people have got to look out for me being more explosive, something that I've been working on. Um, just pushing yourself throughout the rounds and not... It's getting out of my comfort zone as such, you know. It's easy to stay in first, you know, you, you got to go through your gearbox, you got to, you got to, each round, you've got to show the judges that you that you want it, you know, you've got to give it everything, every round, you've got to push yourself. And that's what I've been doing in sparring and, and everything, on my runs, uh, that's something John, John's been saying, you've got to believe in yourself, you know, and knowing when to give up, not to give up. It's just all them little things that you keep doing, you keep sanding your head, and another thing, staying composed. When you're boxing, just everything, staying composed, nice and, Keep it nice and tight. Move, move, jab, move, jab, move, and that's how. That's how. If you want to be champion, that's the things you got to do. You know, it's, it's things inside the ring you have to do. Practice makes perfect. You know, so that's what you got to do. You got to practice. If you want something in life, you just got to keep going at it. Talking of sort of practice, and there's something I've brought up with a few people, and you're quite young and early on in your career as such. But if you had someone now come up to you. 10 year old, 8 year old, who's just started boxing and they said to you, can you give me that one bit of advice? What would, what would you tell them? What would you say to them to do when they're in that gym? Give it 110% or don't give it nothing. There we go. <laughs> it's as easy as that and it's, yeah. it's so true as well. Definitely. Boxing's a lonely sport. There's, you're going to have ups and you're going to have downs. You know, and you've got to have the right people around you. You know, you've got to you're going to be days in that gym where you've had, you don't want to do it, you know, you've had enough, you know, you're going, to have, you're going to have days where you wake up when you should be going for a run, you think, oh, I can't be arsed. But don't do that, you've got to have the mentality of, I want this, you know, you've got to be hungry. Nothing's given to you on a silver spoon, you've got to go for it and you've got to work hard. You know, nothing's free in life. You work hard and you, you get them things, you know, you don't work hard, you get nothing, you know, you get problems. And that's, you've got to make sacrifices, you know, listen, no, no one's had anything given to them. You got to, you got to work for it, and that's how that's how you become a champion, and that's that's how you get yourself recognised. There we go. There's the words from Billy Boy Bird. Um, one other thing I do just want to touch on. Uh, 
This face mask situation. Um, oh, right, yeah. The um, ones that, do you want to see the pictures that I've <laughs> received from yourself? Obviously, you I'm using it on the as camera? well, but it's, um, you're in a manly sport, you know, sharing the ring with uh, men. And, Definitely. But uh, you like to have a bit of a pamper session when you're outside the 100%, ring. 100%, you're not this good looking with, uh, <laughs> without doing any preparation, you know. This is no, no makeup on today. I've, I've left that out. No, I'm just, just finished the session. Just yeah. finished the session. You know, look, still look fresh as Daisy. He's got a nice little run tonight. A bit of sparring tomorrow morning. So I'll probably, just after me run, I'll go and put my old face mask on afterwards and uh, have a little chill out and I'll let you know how I'll get on. <laughs> there we go. It says not all about boxing. These lads do go You've got to look after yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you have. You've got to look pretty. Especially for this camera. Brilliant. Thanks for your time. Nice one. Cheers, lads. See you again soon.